What's good, everyone? It's the Aggie Coach here, man. Welcome to Aggie Coach Talks, another Aggie Coach Talks series, man. And here, um, I'm here to answer another question, man. I got a question about the Fat Eight style, and and the question was, you know, what's different about the Fat Eight style? Wow, <laughs> a lot, man, a lot. It's a lot that's very different. First, let me start off here. When I set out to design the Fat 8 playing style, uh, Fat 8 rule set, um, it was designed during a time when I didn't know anything about any other style. Like I've only recently, I recently started learning about all of the other different ways to play miniature football. You know, that's that's a recent discovery for me. But when I first when I set out to do this thing, when I first set out to design this thing. Um, this is where my head was. The Fat 8 rule style is designed around actual college football. It's not designed around uh, rules to... It's not designed around game rules. It's designed more around uh, actual college football. Right? So the mindset for me was... Uh, when I was playing football in college, the, the the idea was, you know, when I'm standing on the sideline and I'm and I'm watching the game, and one of our one of our guys busts and make a big run, all of us on the sideline running down the field, jumping up and down, like the energy, the energy and the passion that you feel, and with the like the energy coming from the stadium and the, like from the crowd and and the the momentum swings and the emotional ups and downs and that kind of thing was that the characterfulness that kind of thing was a thing that I wanted to bring to this game so when I set out to do this I set out to recreate those feelings that I had when I was actually playing football in college so my rules are designed around that perspective my rules are uh, our style is designed around the actual college experience. So, when I started designing the rules, there was a few big things that had to be there. So, this kind of sets the stage for how the FedEx style plays. First of all, the quarterback has to control the offense. The quarterback has to physically hand off the ball. In our style, the quarterback has to physically touch the player that he's handing the ball off with. Just straight up. That's that's just the way that it is. There's, there's no way around that. Um, the other thing is that leaves room for the quarterback to uh, also run play action, right? So... The quarterback can also elect to not hand the ball off. He can play. He can run play action and and drop back and make a pass. Um, running options, running sweeps, that kind of thing. You can pitch the ball as long as the player is within two base lengths of the quarterback. So right off the bat, the first mechanism that I put in place was quarterback control. So in the Fat Eight style. The quarterback controls the flow of the offense. So the other thing that makes the Fat Eight style very unique is that wide receivers can actually catch the ball in traffic. Wide receivers can catch the ball even when they're being covered. This we call the spectacular catch, right? This wide receiver can come out here, and if this guy is covering him like this, and they're in base contact, if you can zing that ball and make that ball come right here and hit him on the helmet, great catch. That's a spectacular catch. In our style, that's allowed. That's allowed. Um, so that's another thing. Also, adjusting routes. So if this guy is backpedaling like this, and this guy moves after the first play stop, you are allowed to adjust that route and you're allowed to also turn him and have him come and pick up the route but if I can come hit this pass right here even with him covered that's a catch it's an automatic tackle but it's a catch so that's another thing that's really different about our style the other thing is that's really different especially offensively 
is that when the offense comes to the line of scrimmage for the first time, all players, no players can be pivoted, right? So, for example, um, I can't do this. Can't do this, right? Um, this is not the flow in the field of real college football. So, um, so it basically works like this for us. Whenever you come out of the huddle, the defense is not supposed to know or have any idea as to what's coming. So as a general rule for the fat eight, offensively, you have two options. There are two things you can do. You can check out of your, you can audible out of your current um, offensive position and do something like this. You can audible like this and change your formation. Or, or you can do motion like this. That's it. That's it. So you can either run motion or check or call an audible and check out of your formation and change into another formation. Other than that, offensively, that is all you can do prior to the snap of the ball. That is all you can do. Now, pivoting comes into play in our style, what we call route adjustments. That happens after the snap. So in our style, the quarterback um, can stop the board four times. Now, the reasoning is because those four times allow the quarterback to scramble. It allows the quarterback to make play fakes, faking a handoff up the middle to a fullback, or faking a handoff to a fullback and a running back while dropping back. It also allows you to make adjustments to your wide receivers if they're not engaged by adjusting their routes. Okay? So those are some things that's really, really different. Now here are now defensively the defense is allowed to adjust any figures at any time prior to the snap. The whole defense can shift around prior to the snap just like in real football. The other thing is any defensive player that is not engaged is allowed to be pivoted every time the board stops. The defense is allowed to make those adjustments. Okay? In our style tackling is front of base only. Front of base only. So, uh, another this is another important thing about Fat Eight play is having strong running backs. You'll see like different different teams. Some teams have fast backs. Some teams have kind of middle of the road backs. Some teams have big bruisers. The idea is if you have a linebacker come up here and the running back actually the linebacker over pursues and the running back hits him like this, it's a broken tackle. The only way that the tackle is not broken is if that linebacker's momentum turns the running back and forward progress comes to a stop. Then it actually counts as a tackle. But in this case, if forward progress does not come to a close and the running back hits this guy on the side and it just kind of turns him and he runs right through him, that is considered a broken tackle. Also, um, another thing that's different is even if the defender hits, boom, like this, front of base. If that defender hits front of base, but the defender falls over, it's still a broken tackle. Okay. Um, now, uh, in addition to that, to this tackling rule, in addition to that, if the defender hits the running back and knocks the running back down, this big hit has... Uh, has some serious repercussions that goes along with it. A, it counts as a fumble. So in this case, what we do is we drop the ball on top of the figure. Wherever it goes, you now can adjust everybody on the field and they can run to the ball. Whoever gets the ball recovers the ball. Now, this has two serious effects in our style. First, you have to roll to see if this player gets injured. Anytime a player gets hit and gets knocked down, um, that you have to check to see if the player gets injured. For us, you roll one dice on a five or six, that player gets injured. So I roll this dice as a four. He's okay if he doesn't get injured. If, it, if, I roll, if I roll a five or a six, the player gets injured. Now, the first time that happens, um, that player has to sit out for a quarter. It's considered a minor injury. 
If it happens three times in one game, that player is out for the whole season. Sorry, coach. You just lost the player. He is done. His career is done for that season. You got to replace him. Um, the other thing that's really big with this kind of thing um, is morale. Now, the way this is, this is, this is a big thing in the Fat Eight style. You guys see during the videos a lot of times. You see how like the coach is talking to the players. Now, these are these are there's three more big, big, big things in the Fat Eight style that are big deals, and that is player morale, momentum change, and coaching. So, uh, in in case of player morale, in this case, running back gets hit, big hit, running back fumbles the ball. Ohio State recovers the ball. What happens here is, and this goes back to what I was saying to you guys before, all of the players on the field, every player at the beginning of the game is leadership six. So what happens here, I have to take a morale test now to see what happens because this guy's going to get his behind chewed out when he go to the sideline. The coach is going to be pissed, especially if the opposing team picks up the ball and runs it in for a touchdown. Huge momentum swing. This affects the whole team. So what happens is you take them around check now to see if the guys are hanging their heads low, to see if you know how it how it affected the morale. Okay, so six or less, I roll. Uh oh, I rolled a twelve. They fail their leadership check, their morale check. That means that the the squad is hurting. Now when this happens, two things happens. This player gets benched for a series. He's out of the game for a series. Another bat comes in his place. The coach now can choose to keep him in the game, but if that happens, the coach also loses um, loses two of his leadership points. So that's a whole other video to get into. Um, the other thing is that the whole offensive side, because they're rattled now, their leadership is minus one. So the whole offensive side is now leadership five, which means crap can roll downhill very quickly because... If you're getting your behind handed to you and you make mistake after mistake after mistake and your leadership drops, 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 it's very difficult to recover from that. On the flip side, the opposite can happen. On the flip side, um, the team that is performing well, leadership can go from six to seven to eight to nine to a point where it's impossible to get these guys down. They're so electric. Right, but now the coach can also get his guys back into the game. The coach can spin three of his leadership points. It's painful, but he can spin three of his leadership points to coach his team and restore their leadership, their morale back to six to try to give the guys a chance to get them back into the game. So those are the kind of things that really, really can can hurt your team um, in our style because you have leadership and you have morale now i think i'm running out of time here i'm gonna try to speed up the way that um the coaching works all the coaches on the sideline head coach assistant coach offensive coordinator defensive coordinator um skill coaches all of them have um have leadership values for example the head coach is leadership nine and all of the other corresponding coaches are leadership eight so basically what happens is say this guy throws an interception and i want to keep him in the game right and he's leadership six so I take a leadership check on oh, what do you know he passes he's fine nothing happens he stays in the game because he doesn't really care he's not shaking but in the event that I have failed say I rolled a uh, seven right in the event that I have failed now the coach can say you know what I'm leadership nine so the coach can take his leadership check the coach that's an eight so the coach passes his leadership check so the coach can say you know what stay in the game don't worry about it let's go play now, that can hurt in the end because if this guy performs badly, now the coach just lost three of his points. So now the coach goes from leadership nine down to leadership six. You see what I mean? So it costs two points to challenge play. So in that same scenario, if the referee make a bad call and the coach want to challenge that call, the coach is going to lose two more points. So you can see how coaching your players you got to really, really, um, really take your time and, and really pick and choose the, when to coach a player and when to bench that player. You can save your points simply by putting that player on the bench and just saying, you know what, sit over here with me for a series and I'll put you back in the game afterwards. 
um, and, 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 and you can just save those points. So it's that kind of thing that affects the flow of the game. Um, so to answer the question, I would say uh, definitely without a doubt, that is one of the things that makes the FedEx style different from all of the other styles. Uh, my interest is in the real college experience. I want it to feel like a real college game. I don't want it to feel like a board game. I want it to feel like a real college game and I want the players and the players interacting with each other, interacting with the situation, interacting with the referees, interacting with the coaches. And so that is what makes the fat a different. Now you guys don't see that in the videos because when I roll the dice, I don't show it. I just do it, but I don't show it in the videos because it kills the energy of the game. Um, it kills the spirit and the energy of the game if you see the dice. I just want you to see the drama that's unfolding. So when I do it, I do it off screen. So that, I hope that answers your guys' questions, man. I hope that gives you a little more insight into the Fat 8 style. I'll do another video later, just a raw video, just showing you a raw footage of how it all happens without the crowd and the music and, and all of that kind of thing. All right, man. Aggie Coach Talks, man. I'm out. Peace.